when we read the Bible, sometimes these miraculous epic events like the parting of the Red Sea can feel a little distant from us. Sure, the God of the Old Testament was a God of miracles, but has the God of the 21st century ever done anything so dramatic today? While I think God does work in the small and simple details of our lives, our God is also a God of miracles. After the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, Moses' father-in-law Jethro came to visit him with Moses' children and wife. During his visit, Jethro was amazed at all the incredible things the Lord accomplished. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hands of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who hath delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh who hath delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, for in the thing wherein they dealt proudly he was above them. One tangible way that I think God has performed miracles today is in the church's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. There are several ways that the Lord prepared the saints for the upcoming trials that the pandemic would present. For example, in 2018, President Nelson and the Brethren introduced the concept of home-centered, church-supported worship, reducing church to two hours and introducing the Come, Follow Me curriculum. Both of these initiatives prepared individuals and families to be more spiritually self-sufficient when churches were closed. Also in 2019, the First Presidency announced a historic policy change that allowed couples to be sealed in the temple immediately following a civil marriage. Previously, most couples who chose to marry civilly needed to wait one whole year before getting sealed in the temple. This allowed countless couples to marry and continue on the covenant path even while temples were shut down temporarily. And then again in 2019, President Nelson prophesied that the April 2020 conference would be different from any previous conference and to prepare spiritually to be fed. Granted, he was initially referring to how the church would host a bicentennial celebration of the First Vision, but it still resulted in members preparing their minds and hearts for the desperately needed counsel of God's prophets during that time. There are quite a few more examples of inspired changes that blessed members' lives, particularly during the upheaval of COVID-19, and you can read about those in the links in the description below. And while each of these changes and announcement may seem insignificant individually, when you look at them all together, they paint a picture of miraculous, prophetic inspiration. I don't know that President Nelson literally foresaw this particular problem, but I do have a testimony that as he inquired of the Lord and took counsel from his brethren and other counselors, he was inspired to implement these changes to prepare the saints for troubled times ahead. President Nelson taught, in coming days, it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. We live in uncertain times, and there are spiritually troubling times ahead of us. Amidst such uncertainty, it can be hard to know where to live, what job to take, what investments to make, how much food storage to acquire, what health precautions to take, and a lot more. But what we can be certain of is our spiritual future. We can and will survive spiritually if we commit to President Nelson's counsel to anxiously seek after the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost can whisper revelation that will direct our lives and bless others in the process. My great-great-great-grandfather was a man of great faith as a pioneer settling Hillsdale, Utah. In 1880, a thundering hailstorm threatened to destroy his entire crop. Rather than succumb to fear, George Deliverance Wilson brought his faith and priesthood power to the Lord. As the hail began to fall on his farm, he walked out into the field, and in the words of his eyewitness nephew, suddenly he stood still facing the storm. Lifting his hands, he almost seemed to be defying it. Storm, he cried, I command you through the power of the priesthood which I hold, and in the name of Jesus Christ, not to destroy my crop." After the storm passed, his nephew went outside and saw that there was no hail on the garden or on the wheat field, but plenty of hail was piled along his fence, which extended half a mile. It was as if the fence was an impassable barrier beyond which no hail could go. I was surprised then and puzzled, but many times since I have stood on the ground almost in awe as I fully realized that there was a miracle that happened and I had been a witness. So whether you're worried about your health, 
your livelihood, your liberty, civil unrest, international conflict, or anything else, we can know that the Lord is greater than all the gods. He is greater than our temporal worries, and he is with us to guide us through all trials. Our God is a God who works through both small and simple means and through awe-inspiring miracles.